built the most prosperous place, not just for black people, but for any people in this country. And what did this racist white community of Tulsa do in response? They burned it to the ground. And that was the uh, Reverend Robert Turner in a clip from the new documentary entitled Rise Again, Tulsa and the Red Summer. Reverend Turner is pastor of the Vernon AME Church in the Greenwood District of Tulsa, the only building that remained intact during the Tulsa Race Massacre of 1921. Joining us now is Don Porter, the producer and director of Rise Again, which premiered on Nat Geo last Friday and is now streaming on Hulu. Also joining us, Frontline PBS executive producer Rainey Aronson Rath, who, along with Don, is an executive producer of the new multi platform project from Frontline entitled Unresolved. It uses art installations, podcasts, film, and more to examine lives cut short by acts of racial violence. But Don Porter, first rise again. Um, at the heart of this film is uh, the award winning Washington. And Post journalist, uh, Oklahoma native Deneen Brown, um, a journalist who reported on all of this. Tell us about her and the film. All right. Thanks. Thanks. And thanks for having me. It's good to be back here again. I always love being on your show. Um, so Deneen Brown is a multiple award winning journalist from The Post. Um, she has been reporting on the facts of the Tulsa race massacre and wrote a really groundbreaking article for The Washington Post. In that article, she recounted the situation in 1921 when a, a false allegation of a black man assaulting a white woman was the ostensible reason um, why uh, the black prosperous town of, of area of, of Oklahoma and Tulsa Greenwood, uh, 35 uh, city blocks were burned to the ground airplanes dropped firebombs on men, women, and children in the town, and then up to 6,000 residents were interned in an internment camp. So this uh, history is uh, terrible. Um, but in addition to Tulsa, she also reported on the other uh, up to 25 cities in America in the period of the Red Summer. And so it's important for people to understand that Tulsa was not an anomaly. It was uh, one of a series of mass uh, instances of mass violence targeted against black people, usually when they were trying to assert their rights. So what are you hoping people will take away from this as we look back at history and we're learning to recognize these moments, even um, you know, with the president uh, declaring June Juneteenth a, a federal holiday. We're, we're trying to put into perspective the parts of our history that perhaps might have been overlooked even in schooling. Um, you know, I think uh, what I'm trying to to put forth and what Deneen's doing with her reporting um, is really exemplified by the conversation um, that, that you just had about wokeness. Um, this is a, a period of history that led to, uh, you know, black people being murdered by not only other citizens, mm -hmm. but by the police. And so if we don't understand this history, uh, we are seeing it repeated. Um, and, and so I, I think it's really important that we separate out fact. And I'm sorry if that makes people uncomfortable or ashamed. Mm -hmm. People should be ashamed. And then they should work to understand um, why black people and so many other people of color are angry and fearful. And once we understand that, perhaps then we can uh, move forward. So that's mm -hmm. one piece of it. The other piece of it is the resistance and the idea of why the black communities were attacked. They were attacked because they were prosperous and doing well. And by well, I don't mean that they were all wealthy. They were living their lives. These were thriving black communities that caused so much envy that uh, the white communities uh, literally burned them to the ground. And um, I don't think it's woke to understand, appreciate, 
and uh, attempt to, to rectify those atrocities. Hey, Rainey, it's Jonathan Lemire. Uh, tell us a little bit about your project, and it was obviously an extraordinarily powerful subject matter. And tell us how you, what led you to it, and why do you think it's so important right now? Great. And first of all, I'm doing it with Don Porter. So you have both of us here. We're leading the project for Frontline. One of the most important things about Frontline right now is exactly what Don said. It's saying, you know, to be a current affairs series, to be a documentary series in 2021, we need to start telling our history, too. And this big project is embedded inside a web interactive, an installation, and a documentary. And our hope is that we actually uncover and, and shed light on civil rights cold cases. You know, the name of Breonna Taylor is well known, but what about Alberta Jones and so many other people who were murdered in racially motivated murders in the civil rights era? And so this project really attempts to tell people these are those people. They had wonderful lives and they were cut short. And because we're frontline, of course, we rely on facts. We also rely on investigative journalism. We're asking what did the government do and what can the government do now about this, the Department of Justice and the FBI. Dawn, uh, Al Sharpton here. As I listen to you tell about these stories, uh, do you think people in this country really understand uh, the inherent pain that many African Americans, for example, have grown up with knowing these stories that were not put out to much of the American public and the horrors that we internalize because we grew up in that atmosphere. And when you fast forward to today, uh, uh, segueing from where we were just discussing in the last segment about what uh, incremental progress has been made, though we have a long way to go, you could then understand why we all cried when Chauvin, for example, was convicted for killing George Floyd, because we thought of the thousands of George Floyds that never even got to court or the massacres that never were covered. That pain, I don't think a lot of Americans understand until we hear projects like yours go public. I think that that's that's exactly right, Reverend. I don't think that, and and by people, I want to say especially white people. I don't think white people understand what it is like to be the child or the grandchild of a person who witnessed their home being firebombed and witnessed mothers and fathers making the choice about whether they should stay in their homes or leave and risk being having bombs dropped on them. Should they stay in inside and burn up, or should they run through the streets? I I think the other thing that's really interesting um, and tragic is uh, this history was not accidentally omitted from history books. I didn't learn about this in, in New York City quality public schools. I didn't learn about this history in my expensive private college. Um, and so why is it that that part of our history is not is is attempted to be erased? So when uh, we talk about perhaps we leave the past to the past and perhaps we're overcorrecting, I think that that's absolutely incorrect. I think that for so long the sin of omitting mission is as great as the sin of commission, and we intentionally hid this history. So now we have a painful reckoning to do. And perhaps if we had done it decades ago, we wouldn't be in the place that we are today. You know, well, Dawn, isn't that exactly what's happening? Isn't that what you're doing? Isn't that what uh, Annette is doing with on Juneteenth? Uh, aren't, aren't we moving in that direction right now? I think we are moving in that direction, and I am very optimistic about that, and I think that that is long overdue. Uh, I do worry, though, about the backlash, subtle and overt, about uh, learning and understanding history. Um, and so, you know, that's part of my point is, is this is a shameful period in our history. Um, when you look mm -hmm. at the, the, the clip that was selected first about reparations is a small part of our movie, but it's a really significant part. The victims of the Tulsa massacre itemized their furniture and household belongings and jewelry and everything that they lost. And the insurance companies denied those claims uh, because they said it was a riot. So those, you know, when we talk about reparations, let's be very clear here. These people had all of their worldly possessions destroyed, everything that they had worked for for decades, just getting out of slavery. And then they were put in internment camps. 
every other racial minority or ethnic or uh, you know religious minority that was persecuted that way has had some recompense paid. Why not for the victims of Tulsa? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it, it's so interesting, and we've been been having this discussion, um, you know, for for quite some time. It's especially been interesting since the 1619 project has has come around, and um, so there's been this debate between 1619 and 1776. And what we always say on this show is two things can be true at the same time. Uh, you, you can you can look to 1776 and many of the things that that uh, that the promises of 1776 have been expanded uh, far beyond where they were originally intended to, to be expanded. Uh, you can look at 1619 and not disregard that simply because uh, there was a misplaced tweet here or a misplaced tweet there. I think we have to get a lot better. At, at doing what you're talking about, talking about the progress that mm -hmm. has been made, but also talk about the fact that we have a long way to go and ask ourselves a question. I, you know, I was a history major. I've been reading books since I was five or six years old. I've been fascinated about history. I've heard a lot of people ask the same question. Why didn't we know more about Tulsa until the last year? It is, it's, an important question to ask, and it seems to me that with your documentary, that's the question that you're asking here. Uh, you know, that's right. And, you know, I want to also point out, um, just like we criticize our children because we love them, um, I love this country. I love the promise of this right. country. I love what it has afforded me. Um, that doesn't mean that there's not something to criticize. My great-grandfather, my grandfather, my uncles, all are veterans all participated right. in the belief of the, for this country, and that's what we're hoping to attain.